Hi, I'm James Muir, and this is a screencast for Make More Noise. What we're going to have a look at today is backing up a logic project to external media. Uh, probably not the most fascinating topic we'll ever cover, but really, really useful. Uh, I've been there and witnessed the tears and recriminations when people can't find the files that make up their precious song. So well worth focusing on this one. Um, I'm going to show you how I do it, which is a two-stage backup because I'm deeply anal retentive. Uh, but then in fairness, I've been doing this for 20 odd years and I've never lost any files. So pros and cons, as they say. Right. First thing to say is we've got a Logic Project open. It's a mixture of virtual instruments and we've got some recorded audio tracks here, some bass guitar, uh, four tracks of electric and a little bit of an out outro electric here at the end. Um, we've got some loops. So it's, you know, a fairly standard project. It's a good uh, representation of real life. So the first thing we're going to do is rationalise the project. So over the period of time I've been tracking, I've probably been trying things, changing my mind about them, doing duff takes and then re-recording. So first thing to do is go to your media browser and then to the bin. This is the same place as you'd normally find your loop library and browser. So we want to focus on bin. And the first thing to say is we want to go to this edit drop down menu here. And we've got these three options, select all, select used and select unused. So if we select used, it'll highlight the tracks that are actually used in the song. And you can say actually hear what my work progress was. I've got some uh, drum loops up here at the top, which is obviously what I was using when I was going through the writing process. A few tracks, takes of guitar, which I didn't end up using. So that shows you what's actually used in the arrange window. So if we now go to select unused, these are the files which aren't used in the arrange window, so they're not part of my project anymore. So once I've got those selected, I can just hit the uh, delete or backspace key, depending on what you like to call it. And we've rationalized our project, so we've got it down to a smaller size. Now we can close down the media tab, and if we go to the file menu, you'll see we've got the option to do a save as. So I'm going to save as, and then I'm going to point it at my external drive, which in this case is a 16 gig USB memory stick. And that's where we're going to back it up. I'm going to make a new folder for it, and the track at the moment is called Fun and Games. Can't talk and type at the same time, um, so I'm going to create that folder, and then let's just have a quick look at the options. So include assets, which obviously very logically you want to record any audio file record. You want to include any audio files you've recorded. Copy external audio files to project folder. Yeah, that makes sense. So if they're spread around your hard drive, it'll gather them all up and put them in one folder. Copy EXS instruments. Uh, well, actually, I know in this project I don't have any EXS instruments, but again, if you did, your uh, your best bet is to tick that box there and then that'll bring any across. Same with Ultrabeat samples. I know I definitely haven't got any Ultrabeat. Um, space designer impulse responses. Again, I know I'm not using any space designers in this, but if you are using space designers or Ultrabeat, you want to tick both of these boxes. And finally, copy movie files to project folder, which again, I know I don't actually have any movie files in this particular project, so I don't need to tick that. But if you are working to a picture, then obviously you do need to tick that. So now I can just click save and it'll whir away and start saving. What I'll probably do at this point is cut away, let that have a save and we'll come back in a second. Okay, that's all saved. It actually took a lot less time than I thought. Um, so now we can actually close down logic. Um, we'll save our changes because we rationalize those files. So that makes sense. And we don't need to see the screen flow window. And now if we browse across to our um, USB memory stick, which is sitting on the desktop, let's just drag that onto the left-hand screen. You should see here we've got a uh, folder called Fun and Games, which is the one we just created today at 12.02. And then if we look into this folder, you'll see that's our actual logic project, which clocks in at a mighty 1.7 meg. And then we've got audio files here, which looks about right. Bass, yeah, the compiled guitars and the drum loop that we're using for the project. So that looks like a successful backup. Now, the second stage of my backup process, because the way I think about it is that um, if you assume that your hard drive and your computer can fail, which is why you do backups, you need to assume that your external backup medium can fail, or in this case, because it's a memory stick, I'll probably lose it at some stage. I also like to do an optical media backup, so that would be to DVD or CD, and the Probably the most paranoid thing I'm going to say this morning is I like to keep all of those in different places. So what I'll do in this example is I'll obviously keep my memory stick where I normally keep it, which is in my pocket as I'm wandering around. 
then I'll put the optical media somewhere that the computer isn't. So because um, I've got a basement studio, if I had a flood and I'm leaving my backup hard drive sitting on top of the computer itself, any damage that would be done to the computer is going to be done to the backup drive. Uh, so with your optical media, you can give them to a friend or store them in a different room of the house. I think the other thing that's worth saying from a paranoid perspective is if you do get broken into and you've got a hard drive sitting on your top of your computer for backup, the chances is they'll probably nick that as well. So my idea with all of this stuff is to try and keep um, all of my files in three different places in the computer on an external backup drive and on optical media. And then whatever goes wrong, I know that I've always got a file I can go back to. But for the files I keep on the optical media, I use Apple's inbuilt uh, compression algorithm, which will make the file a bit smaller. So if we just Apple I, while we're selected on our folder, we'll be able to see that this is a 61.6 megabyte folder. Not too bad in that case. But obviously on a big song with lots of audio, that's going to be a lot bigger. Now, if you either um, control click or right click, if you've got one of the modern keyboards, you'll see you get this option, compress fun and games, which is the folder we've just made. So I can start that compressing. It's going to take less than a minute. I'll just cut away while it's doing this and come back again in a second. Okay, so as you can see, we've uh, managed to get that down from 60 odd meg to 50 meg, which isn't a lot in this example. But I say, if you're dealing with a file that's maybe a couple of gigabytes, you're going to save yourself maybe 20 or 30% of the size of the original file, uh, which can be well worth doing. And then to uh, burn it onto optical media, it's as simple as just grabbing a blank CD, which I'm doing now. We can whack that in the drive. We should get a little dialog box come up fairly swiftly. Okay, so what's the default action in this case? I must admit, I le always leave it on Open Finder, so I'm just going to OK that. And now we've got our untitled CD. And again, if you control click or right click, you get the option to rename. So in this case, we're just going to call it F and G, and then uh, 2010. So I know when I was working on this, that says 2019. Uh, 2010, so I can save that. Then it's just a case of dragging your zip file over the disk icon, letting go. That's our file, and as you can see up here in the top right-hand corner of our Finder box, we've got a burn option, so we can set that burning. Uh, maximum possible speed, because it's data. Um, with audio, it's worth burning at a slightly slower speed. You get less errors, but with data, burn away at the maximum. So I can click burn, and there we are, burning out backup optical media. So that's my personal way of backing up. I back up to one hard drive, then to optical media, and obviously leave the original sitting on my computer in my studio. So worth paying attention to this one. Back up, back up, back up. I've been James Muir. This has been a screencast for Make More Noise. I hope you enjoyed it.